Hey, what's up? I'm Jason, and today we're going to talk about something that you probably ignore all the time in your game development. I say that because it's something that I know I ignore all the time personally, and a lot of other game developers I talk to struggle with it as well. That thing, as I think is pretty obvious, is game audio. Now, why do we ignore audio in games? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons. One is it's not really the most exciting thing to do in game development. Setting up audio or picking out sound effects, some people really love it, but most game developers really want to get into the gameplay part. They want to get into the meat of the game, not really the sound and extra stuff. Plus, it's really hard to find things that mix and match and sound well together. And then once you do, once you get sounds into your game and you get things hooked up, it's very easy to get really irritated with them and tired of them. You get sick of hearing the same coin sound, the same jump sound, or God forbid, the same background music over and over and over for months and months and months. Eventually, you'll grow to hate it. So you'll become a quick fan of the mute audio button, and then you'll forget that games have audio because you'll start listening to music and other things in the background. And you know, you go, okay, my game's already ready to launch. You send it out and people go, hey, what's wrong with the sound? You go, ah, oh, man, I totally forgot to even add sound to my game. So today we're going to go over the process of how you can add sound in and how you can do it right from the beginning, how you can make it relatively easy to work with, and show you some of the more advanced sound features that come in Unity that a lot of people don't know about. It's really easy to get started with, and you're going to have a lot of capability and I guess just the ability to do cool stuff by the end of it. So if you're interested in adding sound to your game or just kind of adding that extra pop, make sure that you follow along and hit that thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and share this video out everywhere. I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference and it, yeah, it just really helps with YouTube and everything else. So please hit the thumbs up, share it and all that. And then let's get to adding sound to a game. One of the things that makes it hard to do a video about audio is that you really need a game to have the audio in for it to make sense. Just playing a couple sound effects doesn't really make sense in a game context. So to start this off, we're going to use the game that I've already taught as a beginner tutorial. You can download the entire thing right below so you can just grab it and use it as your starting point. Or you can just use the same code in your own projects and plug it in and it'll work just fine as well. It's going to be pretty simple and not very opinionated and easy to apply into just about any project. But the game that we're going to use is essentially a little Angry Birds type clone. where We've got a bird that flies around, hits some crates, kills some enemies, and I think we've got a couple different opportunities for sound effects here. We can add in some background sound. We could add in maybe some launching type sounds, some crate sounds when they get hit and crushed, and even some enemy sounds when the enemies die, or some passive like background taunting sounds. So before we add some audio, let's take a real quick look at our scene and then figure out how we could maybe put in some background music to start. So in our scene, we have a red bird that's our player. This is the object that's getting drug around by the player and launched out to hit the enemies. We have a monster. I think we have two monsters. And then we've got a couple of different crates here. The crates are just boxes with colliders that can fall down. The monsters all have an enemy script on them or a monster script in a particle system, and that's pretty much it. There's also a camera set up here that's using Cinemachine and a target group to keep the monsters and the bird on screen at once. All right, so let's add in some sound effects. Say we want to add background music first. How would we set up a background music system? Well, first, we're going to need an audio clip or a background song to play. I've downloaded some music from Open Game Art, and I would recommend that you just Hop on to Open Game Art and choose whatever music track you like. I'm going to go with this Carnival track. Let me show you where it is, and then we'll show you how to import it into the project. So the Carnival track can be downloaded on OpenGameArt.org. You can go to the Browse section and just search for music and find all of the sound effects or all of the music files. Or you can also just search in the search box for Carnival and find the Carnival Rides one. I've already downloaded it, and I have it in a folder here. So let's take a look at how we can pull this into our project. So here's my folder of all of the sound effects and music files that I plan to use today. I've got my carnival rides, a bouncing sound, a mutant frog, a pack of 30 weird sound effects, and some breaking and falling ones. I'll use these for all the, the different parts. I want to put them into my project, though, and I want to organize them somewhat neatly. My carnival rides is the only one that's really going to be a music file, so I'm going to put that in its own music folder. 
And then I think I'll just make an effects folder that I'll put all of the sound effects in. So to do that, I'm going to go into this audio folder that I've created off of the root. This didn't exist. I just right click to hit create and chose new folder named it audio. I'm going to go into it though, right click, hit create, hit folder again, type in music with a capital M. And then I'm going to do another one that's named effects. So we've created an effects folder and a music folder. I'll go into that music folder. Let's get our audio window open again. And I'm just going to take carnival rides and drop it right into there. That should just copy it from this folder into my project. Then I'm going to take all of these other sound effects, select them all and drop them into my effects. I can actually drop them right there onto the effects part and it should import them all into that folder. Give it just a second to import and then we'll be able to start playing these sound effects. We're going to start with the carnival ride sound effect and making the, well, not really sound effect, carnival ride music and making it play as a background thing. And then we'll go into all of the other effects. So now that we have the audio files in our project, including our music, how do we make it work as a background track? How do we set up some background music that just plays continuously as our player is in game? The easiest way to do it is to create a new empty game object that will just be a background music object and play an audio source. So I'll go to game object, choose create empty, and then I'll name this music, and I'm going to reset the transform position. Now the position doesn't matter because we're not actually working positionally with our audio, but I like to reset the position on these manager type objects. So just so that there is zero, zero. And I remember, hey, that's just a manager of something. So now that it's reset, I'm going to add the music to it by just clicking on the file, the audio track here or the music file and dragging it over to the inspector of the music object. That'll automatically add an audio source to it and assign the audio clip. Now, if I already had an audio source here, I could also just assign the audio clip by clicking the little search box and getting this pop up and then just picking the correct sound effect or this correct sound file. So if I maybe had the wrong one, perhaps I had the mutant frog here and I wanted to reassign it, I could click the little search box or I can just click and drag and drop it right onto the audio clip section. Now, another important thing that most people don't know about is this output section. We're going to take a look at that in one second though. First, we're going to see if the sound effects are working, if we can hear the music, and then how we can mute it and what we can get from using that mixer group there or that output option. So let's hit the game view and let's make sure that mute audio is not on and then hit the play button. All right, there you go. Now you can hear the music playing. And if I hit mute audio, you should hear it get silent. I can unmute the audio, hear it play again. I can turn the audio source off to hear it get muted because that'll turn off the music here. I can also turn it on and just adjust the volume right here. So I've got a little bit of control here and I've got background music playing. And this will work. It'll keep playing this music until my level reloads and it restarts or I beat the level or until the song ends because I haven't actually checked the loop box. So eventually if I let this run for whatever the length of my track is, which it looks like is about 25 seconds, then it should just get silent and I should stop hearing things. In fact, I bet if I hit mute button now, I'll stop hearing anything at all. Look at that. No sound. So what do I need to do to fix that? Oh, check the loop box. Stop playing, check the loop box again because I accidentally checked it while I was playing. And then my audio will just continue to play over and over. But if I beat this level, is it going to keep playing? Oh, let's, let's take a look and see. Let's save our scene. And then I'm going to make this easier for myself. I'm going to move this purple monster here just to the left so that he's nice and easy to kill. Hit the play button. And then let's beat the level and see if I hear sound on level two. So I kill these bad guys. One down. Okay, one down. Come on, let's get this other bad guy. You can do it, little birdie. Damn, I'm really bad at this game. And look at that, it got silent. Why did it get silent? Well, if we expand out here, remember that, hey, we don't have this music object in this level. We've created an object in level one, but that object doesn't exist in level two. So we have a couple of different options here. We can either create a music object per level, which can work if you want to have different music in every scene. That's, you know, one valid and easy way to do it. Just create a separate music object, assign a different track to it, put it in each scene, and it will just work. Now that we have music, let's set up a sound effect. And let's start with maybe a sound that fires when we launch our bird so that our player knows, hey, you've successfully made your bird go flying at the bad guys. How would we set that up? Well, first thing we want to do is go to our bird and add in an audio source. And remember how we added an audio source to the music just by dragging over an effect or dragging over a sound file? 
we'll do the same thing for the bird. We'll just drag over a sound effect that we want our bird to play whenever he launches off. So let's go find a good sound effect for him. In my effects folder, I have this weird folder and it was full of all kinds of different weird sounds. If you select a couple of them, maybe I go select number one through 10, you can actually click down here and play. And you can hear all of the different sound effects. You can make this window bigger, see more of them. I can even select all of them and then start previewing just to kind of click through and play them. You can also click on a single one, by the way, and just click and play it. But I find that selecting all of them and you know batch clicking through is a lot faster than just going one at a time. Now the sound that I wanted to use for this launch is just going to be weird zero one. Again, this was from the 30 CC weird sound effects pack from open game art. If you want to use the same one, go grab it. If you find something better though, use that instead. So to assign this sound effect, I'm just going to take the weird zero one and drag it right over here. Now it's on my bird. I've got my red bird selected. So I drug it onto the inspector for the red bird and it added it as a component. I'm going to show you the other way to do this real quick because I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to right click and remove this component just to show you the alternative way to add it. I'll hit add component, start searching for audio. And if I find audio source right here at the bottom, I can click on it. And then I need to assign the audio clip. I could assign the clip by hitting the search box or just clicking and dragging it. Again, it does the exact same thing as just dragging it onto the inspector. It's just the longer way to do it or the way to do it that really kind of shows you what, what you're doing. So let's hit play now and see what happens when we do this. So hit play. And you might have heard that sound effect play right away. Let's try it one more time. This time I'm going to turn the music off. I'm going to select the music, uncheck it, hit play. And you probably heard the sound. If I go select my bird, the reason that you're hearing that sound is that the play on awake option is checked. We don't want that checked here. We do, however, want that checked on our music. So having it on for our music makes sense because we want it to play right when the object starts. But for our birds launching sound, we don't want that to happen immediately. Let's turn the music back on and let's try figuring out a way to make our bird play the sound effect whenever he launches. Now I'm going to go to select my bird and we'll take a look at the components on here. Look at the code and see if we could figure out where we would add in a sound effect hook. So the only script that we have on our bird is this bird script, this bird.cs file. It's got a launch force and a max drag distance. And I've covered all of these in detail in the course and the other videos. If you're interested in how this all works, you can dig into it all and dig into the source and see all of the explanations for it in one of those videos. But you don't need to do that. You just really need to know that when we launch the bird, we want to play a sound effect. So we need to figure out where we launch the bird and how to play the sound effect when we're at that part. Let's scroll through the code here and take a peek. In our awake, we're caching some things, just caching a couple components into private fields so we can use them later. In start, it looks like we cache a position and then uh, set kinematic to true so that our object doesn't fall. On mouse down, we start dragging. So we say is dragging is true. And then on mouse up, we add some force. We make our object not kinematic. This seems like the part where we're launching it, right? So this is our launching section of our code. What do we need to do in our launching section to play the sound effect? Well, very easy. We'll add a call to get the audio source. So we'll say get component audio source. And then once we have that audio source, in fact, let's cache that. We'll say var audio source equals get component audio source. And then we'll zoom in a bunch and add in the next line, the line that does the magic. We'll say audio source dot play. That's literally all we need. That will make our audio source start playing the sound effect. Let's go back into Unity, hit play, and see if it works. Oh, I drug my window up again, and I'm going to drag it back down. We'll hit play and see if our sound effect starts playing when we launch the bird. Release. There we go. Now we've got the sound effect. But to be honest, this music is overwhelming me. So let's fix the sound effect or the sound levels problem that we have. The fact that I can't hear sound effects, I can only hear the overwhelming blaring music. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go into audio mixer groups. And this is the part that I think most developers don't know about in Unity. A lot of people will start with audio sources. They'll start making them. They'll get them all set up. They'll see this output section, not realize that that's actually something useful and just kind of ignore it. They might play with the volume here and the pitch, but they really are missing out on a lot of functionality and a lot of cool features inside of this audio mixer group section. So let's set up an audio mixer now. To create an audio mixer, we actually need to, well, let's click on the search box. Hit the search box. We'll see we have no options available. 
So we need to create a new audio mixer. To do that, we'll go to Window, and then we'll find the Audio section and choose Audio Mixer. It even has its own hotkey, Control-8. I didn't know that because I never use the hotkey because I only open this thing up about once or twice per project. Like I said, most of us ignore and neglect audio. I am just as guilty of it as all of the rest of you. So now we need to add a mixer to our audio mixer section. We have the window open here. It says that our mixers have no mixers found and we got a big old plus button. If I hit the plus button, it's gonna create a new mixer and I'm gonna name it main just because that's what I've seen a lot of mixers be named. I'll name it main, I'll hit enter. And then I've got a master volume slider. Right now though, nothing is hooked up to my mixer. If I go to my music and I look at my output, you'll see that, hey, there's no audio mixer group. If I hit the little search box though, I now have an option to choose master. I can hit play now and I can actually adjust the volume of my game just by going to edit and play mode. Let's see, uncheck mute and dragging this down. So now I'm independently adjusting the volume of whatever is assigned to this master group. If I drag this all the way down or even hit mute, I can still click and drag and, well, I, I did a terrible job of releasing him. But you see, I click and drag, release him and get his sound effect. So what could we use this for? How could we maybe make it a little bit better? Well, my recommendation is to go into your groups and add in a couple more. Add in a group for music. And then let's add in a group for the player. And right now, notice that it made this a child of the music group. I'm going to make it a sibling just by clicking and dragging it up. This hierarchy works a lot like the Unity hierarchy. I've got this master level, so I could just mute everything at the master level if I wanted to. Or I can go down to these independent levels. Right now, I've got one for music and one for the player, and I need to assign these. So I'll go into my music object right here, and we'll switch this over from main to music. And I can do that by clicking that little search box like I did. Yeah, let's do it. Click the search box and just double click on music. But let's go assign the player and do that a different way. I'll select the player and here I've got that output section again. This time I'm gonna click on player, hold down the mouse, don't release it, drag it over to output and drop it in. Just like all other Unity windows or Unity inspectors, a lot of this drag drop stuff just kind of works. Now I can hit play and I've got independent control over both my player sound effects and my music effect. So I'm gonna turn the music down. Maybe I'll turn my player effects up really, really loud. Like that. And now I can hear it super loud. So this gives us the ability to really fine tune these levels and get things to where we want them to be without having to go in and edit a whole bunch of objects and prefabs. And you can see the levels here. And then there are a ton of extra effects that you can add on top of this. If you look at the add effect option, you'll see there's a big selection of choices. I'm not gonna go into all of them because there's way too many to dive into detail. And to be honest, I don't even understand what all of them do. All right, now let's set up another group, one for our monsters, and let's let them play a sound effect in two different scenarios instead of just one. Instead of auto playing, let's make them play some sound on a timer so that they can taunt our player somewhat randomly and add a little bit of variation to our game. And then let's make it so that our player can interact and click on them too, because players like to click on things and have them do something and making them play a sound effect is an easy, cheap, really, oh, really a really simple thing to do where you don't have to set up animations and all that. It's, it's great. So let me show you how to set that all up now. We're going to create a new group for our enemies. So I hit plus, name this enemy, or let's name it monster. I named these guys monsters and the scripts are named monsters. So I'll name this monsters as well. I'm going to go to my purple monster and we're going to add in an audio source. So I'll add an audio source right here, and then we'll assign the monsters group to it. Now I need an audio clip for my monster, and I thought one that was kind of funny was the frog sound. So I'm going to search right here with the search box, search for my frog, and use, I think, what is it, mutant frog one. Now you, again, you can pick whatever sound effect you like. I just thought that this was kind of a neat one. Now if I hit play on awake and leave loop checked, you're going to see that this is really overwhelming. Let's give it a go. Non-stop, right? Just ribbit, 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 over and over and over. I can edit and play mode, turn this down. But I don't want it to just constantly be ribbiting. Instead, I'm going to turn this back up. And what I want to do is set up a timer to make this thing not play continuously. So instead of having it auto play on a loop, it'll play from our code. But we'll play it at some interval or some random interval. Let's go back to the monster. And then let's uncheck play on awake and uncheck loop. And then we'll open up the monster script. 
Now my monster script here isn't very complicated. It checks when we have a collision to see if we should die. Let's zoom in. If we should die, then we kick off a coroutine to die. None of this really matters for what we want to do here. So I'm going to collapse it all down and we're going to create a new coroutine. And we're going to create a coroutine in a way that a lot of people don't know you can do it with our start method. Now, I'm mostly doing it this way just because I think it's an interesting thing to show and something that a lot of people don't know about. You could, of course, just use an update loop or an update timer or something else to keep track of when to play this. But I think that a coroutine and start is a fun way to do it. So let's show how to do that. First, we need to write an I enumerator. And if that doesn't autocomplete, it's because you don't have the using system.collection statement up there. So I enumerator start. Now, normally you're used to seeing void start and that's the default, but an I enumerator start will make this run as a coroutine so we can yield and wait for a number of seconds. Now that's why it's giving us an error because we're not yielding anywhere. So we're gonna add a yield statement. We'll say yield return new wait for seconds. I'll select the correct one. And I'm gonna call or pass in a value that's just gonna be something variable. So I'll call that delay. A delay doesn't exist, so we're going to need to generate it. We'll generate a variable for it. And then it's not going to be a field. It's going to be a local variable. I could have just typed it up above too. But it's going to be a float named delay. And this is going to be assigned to some random variable between like a minimum and a maximum range for how often this thing should play its sound effect. So I'm thinking we'll use random dot range. Now, if this doesn't auto complete, it's because I don't have a or it's because I have a using system statement up here. So I need to add in the unity engine namespace before the random dot range call. If I didn't have this using system statement here, I could just use random dot range. The reason for this is that unity engine and system namespaces both have their own version of the random class and the unity engine version of it has a range method. The system version does not. And it gets confused knowing, not knowing which one you want to use if you have a using statement for both of those. It's essentially like saying, hey, use both of these packages. They both have a random number generator and they both happen to be named random because it's just too generic of a name. So it doesn't know what to use and specifying it makes it work. So we say unity engine dot random dot range. We give it a minimum value. I'm going to go with five seconds as a minimum and 30 as a maximum. So we'll wait for a minimum of five to 30 seconds. And then after that, We'll just play our audio source. So we'll say get component audio source dot play. And that'll make our bird or our monster, not our bird, our monster play a ribbiting sound you know, once every five to 30 seconds. Now, I don't want this to just happen once though, because I said it would happen once every 30 seconds. This is really going to happen once and then it's not going to happen again. I want this to continue to happen as long as my monster is alive. So to make that happen, we'll turn this little method here in or this little chunk of code here into something that runs in a loop. To do that, we just add the while statement. We'll add a condition which is has died is equal to false, double equals false, and then some braces. Now what this is going to do is run all of the code inside of these braces as long as this statement is true. So as long as we haven't died, all of this code will run. Now there's nothing in there, but if I take this little bit of code, hit control X, click right up here and hit control V. I've now moved it right inside of my line or right inside of my while statement and we'll loop over this as long as my player is alive. So as long as, or my, not my player, my monster. As long as my monster is alive, we'll wait for a delay and then we'll play a sound. And then we'll come back here right to the beginning of this code after we played the sound. And if we're still alive, we'll wait again and we'll play the sound again. Now there is one little bug here in that if my monster dies, and then like while I'm in the middle of this delay, I would also still play my sound. So I might want to also just add in a check here to say, hey, if has died is still equal to false. And then actually do the playing of the sound. And I probably want to add the braces just to make it really obvious what's going on here. And the reason again is that after we've waited for five to 30 seconds, it's possible that has died has changed. So we want to check it again before we play the sound. Now you might think, hey, why not just move this up above? We could do that, but then we're guaranteeing that it's going to play the sound every time right from the beginning. So we're going to get a ribbit from every monster right at the beginning of our game. That's probably not what I want. So I'm going to save this off. We'll go into Unity. Let's go see if we sound or if we hear the sound effects, and then we'll add in the click to play a sound next. 
we go into Unity, we'll hit the play button. And just listen. We should see our monster light up every so often. I'm going to turn our music all the way down. All right, let's stop, go back into the code, and set it up so that we can click on this guy now. To do that, we can just add in a new method. If I delete or delete that extra space there, and let's see, maybe add a little bit of space right up here. We can just add in an on mouse down. Oh, let's try that again. Didn't autocomplete, so say void on mouse down. There we go, it autocompleted for me that time. Whenever we click on this object, the on mouse down method will be called if it has a collider and if we're using the old input system or the default input system. If you switch over to the new one and you disable the old or default input system on mouse down, I think stops working. So with it enabled and with it working though, I should just be able to copy this line to get the component from my audio source and play it, paste it right in there, save it off, go into Unity, hit play. And what I expect to see is that I click on an enemy and they suddenly play a sound for me. Let's try it out. Oh, this guy does. This guy, not so much, right? Click on him, nothing happens. Why is that? What's going on? Well, if we look at our purple monsters, let's go to the scene view. And I select purple monster one here. Look at that. He doesn't have the audio source on him. He does. The problem here is that we're working with prefabs and my purple monster prefab hasn't been updated. I've been working in the scene on this object and I haven't applied the prefab changes. So to apply the prefab changes, I need to go to my override section here. Click on apply all, and then let's drag this back over and select the other monster and see if he's updated. Look at that, he is now updated and he has the audio source. Now if I hit play, both of these monsters should be clickable. So play sounds, everything works. If I click off of them, no sound effects. All right, let's stop playing and let's add in the last bit of sound or some randomized sound when we hit a crate or when a crate should maybe take some damage. So we're gonna need to create a new script now, one for our crates, because if we click on a crate, you see that it doesn't really have anything at all. Our crate is a sprite renderer with a rigid body. The rigid body is just set up to fall like normal physics and a box collider so that it well, tumbles around like a box. So we're gonna need to add in a new crate script. So I'll go to my scripts folder, we'll right click, choose create, choose C sharp script and type in the word crate with a capital C. Then for our crate script, Let's see. Well, let's open it up first. We'll double click on it. What do we want to do in here? Well, we want to deal with collisions. When our crate gets hit by something or when our crate crashes into something fast enough, we want to play a sound effect. Now, if our crate just kind of like tumbles down lightly on something, we don't really want to play a big bang. But if it hits something hard at a, a big enough magnitude or a big enough velocity, we want to play like a, a explosion or a crashing sound. And I want to mix it up. I don't want to just play the same random or the same sound every single time. So we're going to get rid of our start and update methods here. We're going to add an on collision enter 2D. As I'm working in 2D, we need to use the 2D methods. If you're in 3D, get rid of the 2D part, obviously. If you're in 2D, though, make sure that you're using the correct method. So in our on collision enter 2D, I want to check to see how fast my object was moving when it fell. So we'll say if collision dot relative velocity dot magnitude is greater than, I'm gonna go with a value of like five meters per second. In that case, whoops, I didn't want to board packages. That was a bad autocomplete. In that case, I wanna just play my audio source. So say git component audio source dot play. So what's this gonna do? It's gonna make sure that my collision is at least five meters per second. Um, and then it'll play an audio clip if I have one on me. Otherwise, um, it's just not gonna play anything. It'll say that, hey, we're too slow. In fact, let's log something out if we're too slow. I'll say else debug.log collision was too slow to play a sound. Let's fix the word play there, not pally a sound. And um, let's even put in the magnitude. So it'll say collision.relativevelocity.magnitude. Now we can see how big or small the collisions are that are too small to play a sound. I'm gonna go back into Unity. I'm gonna go select this crate one right here. Let's assign the crate script to it. And then we need to give it an audio source with an audio clip. So let's go into our audio folder and the SFX breaking was the folder that I liked for this, or it was the ones with the sounds that I liked for it. And I wanna go with wood hit zero one. So I'm just gonna drag that out, assign it. I'm gonna uncheck play on await, hit play and see what happens. No sound so far. 
I go to my console, you'll see that there was a collision that was too quiet to play a sound. That makes sense because this box just kind of lightly fell on top of it and it fell to touch the ground a tiny bit. Let's see if I can launch and maybe knock this box and make it play some sound. I'm going to guess no because there's so much stuff in the way. Oh, maybe it played. Let's stop playing and go assign a mixer to it so we can see if it's actually playing. So go to the mixer group, hit the plus button. We'll add the uh, crates. Seems like a good name for this group. And then we'll assign this crate to that crates group. We go we'll drag that over. And I'm going to get rid of or just move this crate over here so that it's very easy to hit. Put it right there where it's obvious that I'm hitting that crate if I just aim right at it. And let's see if it plays a sound. I heard it. You probably saw it and heard it. So that seems to be working. But now I need to go and do that to all of these crates. The obvious solution here is to stop. Think about it for a moment and turn my crate into a prefab. So I'm going to hit Control Z to move my crate back to where it was before. It just undoes the last action. Control Z is just undo and pretty much everything with computers. And I'm going to go to my prefabs folder. I'm going to take this crate and I'm going to drag it right into the prefabs folder. I'm going to get rid of the word one after the crate. I don't like having a one in my crate name. Let's hit F2. Hit end. Oops. Control Z because I hit the wrong key again. Click on it, F2, and backspace, backspace, enter. There we go. I've renamed it to crate. I'm going to hit back to get out of prefab edit mode. And then I'm going to start re replicating or duplicating this crate everywhere and replacing all of these other ones. I've got all these other crates right here above. I'll select them all with shift and select, hit delete, select this crate, control D to duplicate it, and just move it up. And if I hold control while I'm in snapping mode, if you're in global, Switch over to global, you can use grid snapping mode, and then I can hold control to drag by quarters of meters. So I'll duplicate it again, hold control, drag it, drag it, drag it. That's enough blocks or crates. And then I'll grab this, drag it over. And now I hear sounds. Now let's wrap this up by randomizing the sound that our crates play so that they don't sound exactly the same every single time. I've got all of these clips and I'm always playing the same sound. So how would I do that? We need to go in here and just add in a bunch of audio sources, maybe a bunch of children and pick one to play at random. Well, no, the solution is actually a lot simpler. We'll just go into our crate script. And we're going to add in an array of audio clips that we can assign in the inspector. And then we'll just choose one of them at random to play. So right here on line seven, we'll add a serialized field. It'll be of type audio clip array. So audio clip with the square braces, which just means it's a collection or a set of audio clips that we can assign. We'll name this underscore clips. And then we'll go down to our on collision intersection and where we play the audio source, what we'll do is choose a random clip. Instead of playing the one that's assigned on the audio source, we'll choose one from this collection and play it. So will say var clip equals clips. And then we're going to use the indexer or the square brace. We want to get the one at the index of unity engine dot random dot range from zero to clips dot length. And then we'll add in a semicolon and the, the closing braces at the end. And then on our next line, when we play, instead of doing play, we'll say play one shot. So I click on the end, hit control space to get the auto complete there. Double click on one shot and put in the word clip. Play one shot will play any audio clip that you assign to it on that audio source. So here, what we're doing is we're getting a random index right here with this random dot range. We're finding the clip at that index. We're getting it into this clip object or this clip variable, and then we're playing it. In fact, I could even refactor this and write this as int index equals the random dot range and then use clips at index. Make it even easier to read. Or we can even say that this is an audio clip that we're grabbing. So we're choosing a random audio clip and then playing it. Let's go into Unity. And if I hit play now, I'm going to have errors because if I look at my clips section, you see that the list is empty or I have no clips assigned. Now this view right here is only in Unity 2020.2 20, and newer. The older one, it looks a little bit different. It might not say the list is empty. It's going to say something slightly different. But if I click, drag this out, oh, it's not playing any sound effects. And I have errors in here saying that the index was outside of the bounds of the array. So I'm going to stop playing. And we need to go to our crate and just assign a couple audio sources or audio clips. So I'll go to my project view, click on the audio clip to select it. Or it just kind of finds it for me. Then I'll click and just drag these onto my clips section. I'll take wood hit one, two, and three. Assign them all up. We'll save. We'll hit play. And now I should hear a different sound for each box or some randomization or variation at least. 
right and if you didn't hear much there it's because i forgot to apply the prefab if we look at the other crates here you see that they don't have their clips assigned let's go into the overrides i'll hit apply all which is just off screen we'll hit play one more time and see if we can hear some of these crates now <laughs> there we go now we've got some variation We've got audio in a bunch of different parts of our game. We've got background music that we can turn on and off and kind of adjust. We've got a whole bunch of really just cool functionality and possibilities here. So if this was helpful for you and you want to learn more about audio or you just want to learn more about random game dev stuff, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and just share this or just hit the thumbs up button and share it or leave a comment or something. I appreciate it. It helps a lot and it, I mean, it really makes a big difference. Also. Again, special thanks to everybody on Patreon and everybody else who supports me in all the different ways that you guys do, all the comments you leave and all the nice things. I appreciate it. It makes a big difference. So thanks again. Hopefully this helped a lot. And if you have suggestions or recommendations, other things you want to see, let me know. Just again, drop a comment or send me a message. All right. Thanks again. And goodbye.